Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, everybody. For those of you that are new, my name is Mary D. Welch, and welcome to the Mary D. Talk Show. I know um, I went first before I get, I always try to, you know, sometimes I forget. Before I go any further, I want to thank you, our live viewers. Thank you, live viewers, for tuning in. It really matters that you're here. It always does. And um, you always keep me going on uh, the live viewers, but replay viewers, so do you, because I actually go back and I look and see, you can see, you can't say who they are. You just see the numbers of the people that, that are watching. So it does make a difference. So hi, live viewers. Hi, replay viewers. Hi to both of you. I want to thank our executive producer for the show. The executive pro producer is Oliver Welch. Hi, babe. He's the one uh, behind the scenes. He comes, you guys get the chance to meet him at least once a year. He comes in and introduces himself to you. So just so you to know that. And I also want to thank our sponsors, the Idea Club, theideaclub.com. It's a sponsor. Uh, front, uh, front, not Front Page Publishing. I'm sorry. Front Page Publishing is a sponsor. Front Page Publishing. If you're, if you're looking to write a book, if you're looking to publish a book, Front Page Publishing is another sponsor. Uh, Doula's Rock is another sponsor. If you're looking to find information about doulas, you can go to Doula's Rock. And also uh, MainAmbition.org, MainAmbition.org. So thank you to our sponsors for today's show. I also want to go, I wanted to make sure, because I said, this is what I have, I, have a hab I have a habit of doing. I get ahead of myself. So as you can see, I did something different today. When you first come on the show, it shows you the name. That's rare that I ever have the name of the show when you first come on. Um, so I'm trying to do something different. Hi. Hi, Ruby. How are you? Good to see you. I want to also encourage everyone to, on YouTube, please like, uh, subscribe, and share the show. I, I, right now, it's on YouTube, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. Twitter, Twitter, it's Mary D. Welch, one, two, three is on Twitter or, or X. It's on all of those platforms. Um, so whatever platform you're on, please like it. Please uh, share it out to your family and friends. It does matter. Let me tell you now, because if you say, you tell them to see a show, that's more powerful than me ever saying it because people, they're listening, they're, they're going to trust that you, you want them to see something that you know, it may in some way help them or educate or whatever the case may be. But you said it and they're going to trust your opinion. So it does mean a lot. So don't forget to like it. And so you hit the like button and that you subscribe. Make sure I get uh, that you subscribe to the show if you haven't already and that you share it out. All right. OK, we're going to get into today's show. Today's show is Jealousy versus Envy. Wow. Oh, you know, I'm going to tell you about this because what I like about this is that we've all experienced it. We've all experienced it. There, If you're living and breathing, you've experienced th these things. So that makes us all human. It does. I think the key is that we recognize it. That's the key that you recognize these emotions. As long as you recognize it to me, you it doesn't have control over you. It only has control over you when you don't recognize it. That's the key. You can, you just got to recognize when you're feeling these things. I know um, I was talking earlier and I talked about how we, and I had to learn this, that the only person that's running your race is you. There's nobody else. There is, I, we act like there is someone else running a race in life but there isn't. The only one in that race, you're the only one. Isn't that something? There's not 10 people. There's not 20 people. There's, it's, there's no, and, and believe it or not, there is no finish line. Well, the finish line, I guess you say is death would be the finish line, but there's no actual quote unquote finish line. But if you ran your race and I say run your race or live your life and you have like you have blinders on, I don't know if you've ever seen horses when they're running, they have blinders on. So the horses can't see the other horse, what they're doing. You know why they don't want to see them? Because they don't, because what if the, the other horse is behind them? Then they can stop running or not run as fast because they think, oh, they're, you know, they're, 
they're back there. I don't have to run that fast. But if they don't know where that other horse is, what are they going to do? They're going to run. They're going to run. So we're going to talk about that, about um, what is jealousy, what is envy, how uh, it affects our lives. That's what we're going to talk about. And let me go on. And, I didn't put this up there. If you don't know how to contact me, some of you, I've, I have people say, well, they have now, you see in the email, you can always send me an email. Always. Let me give my email. My email is mary at, I'll put it up here for you, mary at marydwelch.com. Mary, here we go, at marydwelch.com. And you can always send me an email there. That email, every single day, that email's checked. Every single day is checked. There's not a day go by that I don't check the email. I have to. Um, so you can always send one there. If you'd like to have me be a speaker, um, either a motivational speaker or come to speak to a group, that, send me an email. That's the best way to contact me. Okay. Now we're going to get into jealousy versus envy. Ooh. <laughs> so, and I'm going to first give you the definitions of it. Okay. Because one thing I noticed um, on jealousy, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. That's probably better. Okay, what is jealousy? Jealousy is a feeling of resentment, bitterness, or hostility towards someone who has something that you don't. I'm going to say it again. Jealousy is a feeling of resentment, bitterness, or hostility towards someone who has something that you don't. Now, think about it. There's millions of people that have something that you don't. So this has to be someone that you either you saw or you heard or about something like that. But that's what, or maybe someone in your, in your, you know, inner circle, maybe some, someone, you know, just got a new car, but you didn't get a new car. Maybe you're still driving an older car and you're like, well, how is it that they can get a new car? I deserve a new car. Don't I mean, have you? Now, I'm gonna speak for me. I'm not gonna, speak, I can't speak for anybody else anyway. But the point is, I'm saying this because who hasn't felt like this? Who hasn't felt like who hasn't felt like you know what? So and so got they got a new car, they got a new house, um, they're doing this, they're doing that, and then you think, when's my turn? I felt like that before. I have felt like that before. I And then I had to realize I had to get out of my own way. Because the truth is, when I did do those things, I didn't even think about somebody else may have felt like that about me. I never did I ever once even think that. I didn't even think, oh, somebody else is thinking that, that they should have got the house or they should. I, I didn't even think like that. This is what I thought. Truth, this is uh, this really did happen to me. I thought that just like it was my turn this time, it'll be someone else's turn next time. That's what I thought. Now, yeah, I I, I used to think that I used to think that because I kept thinking, I said, Well, this it's like anything else in the universe. Nothing uh, uh nothing happens a hundred percent of the time for any of us. Nothing. It's, it's, it's never a hundred percent. It's almost like there's a, like God is saying, no, you know, it's going to be, it's going to happen, but it may not be today or tomorrow. You just have to, as they say, stay in the game, stay, stay in the game. It's, it will happen. You, it's almost impossible for it not to happen if you stay. But the hard part is staying in the game. Think about this. It's not, that's the hard part. Because you, it looks like everyone else is being is um, getting their what they want, and it may look like you're not getting what you want. So, what is jealousy? A feeling of resentment, bitterness, or hostility towards someone who has something that you don't. Wow. This could be general. This could be general success and achievement a trait, a social advantage, a material possession. 
or a relationship, among other things. People have killed people because of jealousy. Killed them because they were jealous of them. What matters is that the other person has the thing you want. It and you want you want it, and it makes you resentful of them. And I shared with the with the show last week about the lady who was jealous. I didn't even I hate to even admit this. I didn't even know she I didn't even know who she was, much less I didn't know she was jealous. But we were teenagers. And I didn't know anything. I, of course, now I say I didn't know anything. I thought I knew something. But she was jealous because I was with her, which I thought was her ex-boyfriend. It probably was her boyfriend. I just didn't know it. And she was, she had said horrible things about me and all kinds of things. Think about this. She's doing all this talking about me. I never knew any of it, number one. I didn't even care. And she had to live with that for years, for I think it was 15 years. I never knew. So it was eating her alive, eating her up inside. I never knew a thing. Never did it once ever enter into my mind. I didn't even know who the girl was. So for me, she's having a, you know, as they say, conniption. And I'm not caring one way or the other. <laughs> but that, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? What is that, that saying? is, you know, you, she was, as they say, drinking the poison of all of that into her system and expecting it to hurt me. It never hurt me because I never even knew about it, number one. And number two, even if I did, what could I have done about it? So it didn't bother me. But it tells you too, just what how, you know, people, like I said, people kill people over crazy, I call it crazy stuff, but it is. The adjective, the adjective form of jealousy is jealous, J-E-A-L-O-U-S. When used in a context of a, of a context of a romantic relationship, jealousy more specifically refers to a feeling, a feeling or suspicion or uneasiness that often comes from one's partner giving or being given positive attention by others. I'll say it again. The adjective form of jealous or of jealousy is jealous. When used in the context of romantic relationships, jealousy more specifically refers to a feeling of suspicion or uneasiness that often comes from one's partner giving or being given positive attention by others. Now, at the end, I'm going to give you guys a little, I'd say, say a, a, a pop quiz. <laughs> it's, and it's, not, it's only like six quick questions, but it kind of can solidify the difference between jealousy and envy. And I'm going to go and give you the, the definition for envy too. Oh, this is, okay, hold on. I'm looking at the, the, the comments coming in. Let's see. I'm, I definitely want to put rubies up. Really, <laughs> but I want to go give you the definition for envy because I don't think I put envy up. I don't think I have it on the slide. Let me think. And envy, the def I'll just give you the definition for envy. First of all, it's envy and same as jealousy. Although many people consider envy, quote unquote, envy and quote unquote jealousy synonymous, they actually have distinct meanings. Envy is the painful feeling of wanting what someone else has, like attributes or possessions. Let me say that again. Envy is a painful feeling of wanting what someone else has, like attributes or possessions. If you're jealous, you feel threatened, protective, or fearful of losing one's position or situation to someone else. And I'm gonna read this over because I have even done it, interchange these two between jealousy and envy. That's why I'm, I thought this would be a good topic. It is, um, this is for, is envy the same as jealousy? Although many people consider envy and jealousy synonymous, 
they actually have distinct meanings. Envy is the painful feeling or wanting that someone else has like attributes or possessions. If you're jealous, you feel threatened, protective or fearful of losing one's position or situation to someone else. That's jealousy. That's the, that's the difference between the two. So, um, on the, let me go on to the, the next slide so you can see that. Now, the next one is, let's see, here we go. Okay. On envy, green with envy and the green-eyed monster. Thanks to Shakespeare, there is a strong association between jealousy, envy, and the color green. Thanks to Shakespeare, there's a strong association between jealousy, envy, and the color green. The phrase green with envy means feeling a strong sense of covetousness for what someone else has. And covetousness um, if you heard the nerd to covet, um, it's used in the Bible. It was used in the Bible about coveting someone else's wife, meaning that you, I, if I, if I use it correctly, I say lusting after someone else, of, of what someone else has. You want what they have. Um, that could be considered covetousness. Shakespeare described envy as the green sickness in the play, Anthony and Cleopatra. So if you're coveting if the covetousness, which is what um, we said to covetousness would be that, would that be jealousy or would that be envy on covetousness? Jealousy versus envy. I, I think truly, I think it's a thin line between those two. I really do. I think jealousy and envy is so closely related it's kind of hard to say, is it this or is it that? It's cut to me. I think it's hard. I think it's. I think they're so closely aligned that we use them. I know I do interchange. I know I do interchangeably. That if you say someone is envious or jealous, you kind of use it. They're used, you know, I, I together almost like you know, as they said, uh, simultaneously. Yeah, so you'll put those two words together that if you like they said the green eyed monster. I don't I don't say the green eyed monster for jealousy though. I don't think so. I think I that is you use it for envy, but it's used in the same context that if I were to, to use the word uh, jealousy and envy, they it would be used there the same way. So that's why that's very um something that we I think I'm not the only one, but that we use it the same way. If you're if you're jealous or you're envious, it can be used in the same way, in the same sentence. So keep that in mind. Now, I, I know, um, I'm trying to think of situations, I, like I mentioned before, the, the one lady, that's one that's it's close to my heart because it was so, I, I, I'll never forget that, that this, I, I'm not, as I mentioned, I still don't know who the lady is. I just know the situation. So I still really do not know who this woman is, but I know that she exists. And I know that um, when my sister told me about it, she, cause she called me right after it happened for and then quick, the way it happened. Those of you that were not here last week, um, when we were in high school, my, this lady, uh, as I said before, said some really ugly things about me. I was dating her boyfriend, I guess, or ex, it was her ex-boyfriend. That's what he told me that they had broke up. I didn't go to her and ask her, so I didn't really know if they did. I just went by what he said. But that, you know what? That was during the times people pretty much, I think, told the truth, I think. Who knows? Anyway. But she was jealous of me, but I never knew it. I didn't even know who the lady was. I had heard rumors about her, but I really didn't know who she was, if that makes sense. I if I, I wouldn't be able to pick her out or anything like that. I, that's how much I didn't know about her. But she knew all about me. And um, in, in the interim of that, you know, she's saying derogatory things that I didn't know about. Remember, keep this in mind. I was not aware. 
And because of that, years later, 15 years later, she ran into uh, my sister. I admit, my sister and I look a lot, a lot alike. And she thought that it was me. And she asked for forgiveness. So for 15 years, she carried this around of all the negative things she said. And I was not, as I mentioned before, I didn't even know about it. But my sister, you know, for, thought, acting as though she was me, said, oh, no, you're forgiven. It's okay. And they were hugging and the girl is crying. She's literally hysterical is what my sister was telling me. And I'm just listening to her and I'm thinking, I don't even know who you're talking about. So I just still didn't know who it was. But it really, it, it affected me in that because of her ugly way, that's what that, that's what I call it, ugly ways, it stayed with her for 15 years. It never stayed with me because I was, I never run around talking you know, about people like that, but she did. So that's how it came out. Oh, I see. You said, oh, thank you. You said covetness seems to deal with envy of worldly possessions. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ruby. Perhaps material things that someone has. Oh, it says to covet people's wives. I think that's in the Bible somewhere. I, I don't like to quote the Bible because I can't tell you where it is. Just that, uh, but that covetness too, that you, you know, like when, when a man is interested in another man's wife, that kind of thing. So that's deep, deep. But thank you, Ruby. <laughs> and also we have Elaine. Elaine said, hi, hi, Elaine. He said, I agree that with the line that is, it is very thin between these two terms, envy and jealousy. The distinction makes me more cognizant for sure. It does. Thank you, Elaine. And Elaine, I'm glad you're here because I need to talk to you about um, the scholarships and we still need to get you on the show, Elaine. Hello, Elaine. <laughs> Hi, Elaine. Uh, so I definitely would like to get you on the show. This is the scholarship guru, ladies and gentlemen. That might as well be her name, the scholarship guru. I want to put a uh, send a list out through the email, Elaine, of the scholarships and deadlines. I've already sent out two. You probably saw those for the AKA and Deltas. But I want to send out some more to students because this is the scholarship time of the year or we're yeah now is the time of the year to start applying so anyway so the ladies and gentlemen these are two interchangeable as i said before um my um that that's the only thing i'm now that one is the only one that comes to mind because it was so dramatic it was so I mean, like my, my, to have my sister tell it, the lady was just, you know, beside herself. So asking for forgiveness. Now, it's so interesting. I never knew what she said anyway. <laughs> I still don't know. But it's still, whatever it was, this how I look at that kind of thing. It must have been so bad. It had to be terrible. So what, what do I tell anyone from that situation? Don't go around talking about people. Don't do <laughs> I'm like, I'm just being honest. Don't do that. Cause then, cause then it's like, I, and I went to share this with the show today. Ah, this is totally off subject. Let me tell you this. This happened to me. So I'm saying this, to, I went to, I did want to share it with you guys. And that was, I did not know, ladies and gentlemen, this was such, a, it was such an epiphany for me. It was such an epiphany for me. I did not know I had turned into a complainer. Think about this. Think about this, ladies and gentlemen. I was shocked when I, when I, it, it, the reality came into my head that I had been complaining. And I don't mean once in a while. I had turned into a complainer, which is totally against what, as many of you know, what I, I truly believe in speaking positivity and did not know I turned into a complainer. That is such a shock for me to realize that. It really was. And when I realized it, I could not believe it. I was almost, in, it's like, what? You're a complainer? Well, I'll tell you this, how it, it, when it hit me, I had stopped believing. Oh, I don't even know how to express to you guys what this means. It's so huge. I stopped believing. I stopped believing. I know you're saying, but stop believing what? I stopped believing that I could get the thing, I stopped believing that the things I wanted could come to pass. As many of you know, the, the screenwriting, the books, the not, I'm not so much on the books. The books, I feel very confident in that. Screenwriting, I'm not as confident. And all it is really is like anything else you learn. 
That's all. I tell anybody. I've taken classes. I didn't know I'll be the first. I didn't take any, not one class have I taken about writing a children's book. Not one. That has just come to me. So I know that's a gift. Screenwriting, not so much. That is That has been a struggle. But I'm getting there. I've written the entire script. Talked, I already have, but many of you know, I pitched that. And I, this is my, I'd say my commercial, but I'm saying this to you. I stopped believing. Think about this. This is really, I know it may not sound powerful to you, but it's powerful to me because I understand what be, your, your hopes and dreams and beliefs that it has everything to do with how you think about things. Not a little bit, everything. And I had started losing faith. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. This is, ah, it's big to me. It's big to me. And I now that I realize it, and now I'm back on the, you can do this, Mary. This is not bigger than you. It's not nothing. As the Lord told me years ago, there's nothing bigger than me. There is, there, think about it. There's nothing, nothing bigger than God. I don't care how what they make on this planet. I don't care what anybody does. Nothing. So I'm saying this to you, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you ever, ever lose faith. If you ever start complaining, um, it's so interesting. I, I just, I'm just amazed. I'm amazed because I always consider myself a positive person and stuff like that. But now when the reality hit me, I had turned into a complainer. Oh, that was one of the, that's, that's like death. It not like death. It is death. I'm not like, I'm just going to be, just be honest. It is death to whatever you are doing. When you're complaining, you get whatever you speak about, whatever you focused on, whatever you what, think about, that's what you're going to get. And I was complaining. And I really, I, every time I look back, I'm just like, oh, thank you. that. Oh, but I, I do. I, I try to read the word. I try to stay. And that's how it came to me that I was a complainer. It's, it's reading the word. And I was like, what? I'm a complainer. I was shocked. I was shocked to find out I was a complainer. So you may find out, to, but you have to, I think this is how you find out these things too. You have to get quiet. I did. I had to get quiet and I had to be still to find this out. I couldn't find this out. As long as I was running around and I wasn't still, I had to get still probably to, to hear the voice of the Lord. Cause I couldn't hear before. I just couldn't, I was too busy too. It was too much noise in my ears until I could get quiet and still. It's like, and I, when I heard, I was like, Oh my God, I am a complainer. So that now that's the mic. That's my commercial. <laughs> I just want to share that with you guys because you may find that that's you are doing the same thing and don't even know it, and don't even know it. Haven't realized it. Don't know it. It's not. It hasn't shown up. That kind of thing. But it showed up on me. I'm gonna speak for me. It showed up, and I'm so glad I know now. Now I think about the words I'm saying. Now I'm, I'm more focused, and. It's changed everything. It's changed everything. So when you speak, this what I and I've always said this, and that's why I was so surprised when I found out that I was I was complaining, is that you get more of whatever you're speaking of. Whatever you are speaking of, you're gonna get more of that. So what are you speaking about? You're gonna get more of that, whatever that that is. You're gonna get more of that. So be careful of things you're saying. That's really all it is. So you're going to speak your existence and speak whatever you want into existence. That is a fact. This is a fact. These are laws. It's not something I'm making up. These are natural laws. Whatever you want, you don't speak about anything you don't want. You speak about the things you do want. Now, let me go on. Let me go into the next slide before I go on. That was a quick commercial. And then he like, or no, it was Ruby said. It, in the Bible, it talks about covenants in Colossians. Okay, Ephesians and Hebrews and Matthew and Timothy. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ruby. I knew it was in there. Now, I didn't know where. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the truth. I knew it was in there. Where it was in there, I did not know for sure. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. As I said, we have a quiz. First, I think we have here. And thank you again, Ruby. Thank you. 
Um, we have here, let's see, I think I have the book that is the number one selling book. This is our, our, our commercial. Um, and I say that because I just went online a few minutes ago and it has 21 reviews, which I'm very proud of. Oh, we didn't show up yet. Oh, it's the next one. Oh, let me show, let me do this first. And then we're going to go to the, I'll show you the commercial. The term, the term green-eyed monster is a way of referring to jealousy. In the first written record of the phrase comes from Shakespeare, Shakespeare's Othello, which is known for its themes of jealousy. In the play, jealousy is said to be the green-eyed monster, which thou mock the meat it feeds on. The phrase, many may allude to cats, may have green, ha, which can have green eyes and are known for playing with their prey. The phrase green eyed can also be used by itself to mean jealous. The green eyed monster. Ooh. You can think about it. I just, I, ooh. every time I think about that. Uh, okay, here we are. Here's your first question, ladies and gentlemen. Question one of six. Carla's crush texts her lab mate instead of her. This is the one she's crushing on. Carla resents her crush and her lab mate for this. Carla is feeling, is it jealous or is she, is she feeling jealousy or is she feeling envy? So you can write this down or you can just think about which one it is. Is it jealousy or is it envy? I'll say it again. Carla's crush texts her lab mate instead of her. Now, remember, the crush may not even know that Carla feels like this. Carla resents her crush and her lab mate for this. Carla is feeling. The answer, ladies and gentlemen, is jealous. She's jealous. That's what she wants the crush to be texting her instead of texting the lab mate. So that's what it is. That, oh, you got, <laughs> well, thank you, Ruby. Ruby said, <laughs> oh, that's, a, I like that. You know what? Why don't we do that? You guys type, type your answers in there. I said, I thank, thank you, Ruby. That's a good one. Oh, and, and thank you, Elaine. Elaine has, you guys go, you got, da -da -da -da. you both got A's for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then this is, hold on, let me see. This is the next one. I think this is going to show you the book. Oh, no, I guess it doesn't. Maybe this. This one may not have it here. Okay, well, anyway, let me go on. Next, question number two. Seema and Jesse both applied to Harvard, but only Seema got in. Jesse is upset and wishes she had gotten in like Seema did. Jesse is feeling, is it jealous or envious? Is it jealous or envious? I'm gonna let, I'll let you write your answers in and then I'll in the comments and then I'll tell you what the answer is. Okay. We ready? Envy Elaine. You think Jesse's feeling me? Yep. Ding 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 ding. You both got A's again. It is envy. Good job, ladies. Seema and Jesse both applied to Harvard, but only Seema got in. Jesse is upset and wishes she had gotten in like Seema did. Jesse is feeling envious or envy. That's what that is. She's it's so interesting. Now, because could it be jealousy too? Could she be jealous of her? Do you think? But it is envy. That that is the correct answer. Let me tell you that now. You are you are correct. So, ladies, we have two. We have two ladies that have two A's. And this is the commercial, ladies and gentlemen. The Saying No Nicely book is available on Amazon. You just type in, go to Amazon, type in Mary D. Welch. So far, 21 reviews. There are four, I think four and a half stars. I don't know why. This was what, what oh, one of the boys would tell me. They said, I told them that somebody gave me, uh, I want to say a three or 3.5, something like that. And they're like, mom, you have a hater. I said, what do you mean I have a hater? They said, somebody is hating on you. Because before that one, I had, I had like 18, 17 or 18 five stars. And then all of a sudden someone, you know, rated lower and it brought the rating down. And they're like, you're doing good if you got haters. <laughs> I was like, what? 
So that's telling you, that's, that's what they said. I thought that was so funny. They said, you are doing good if you have haters. Wow. I don't know about that part, but that's what they said. Okay, but that's so that I just want to make sure you saw that, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get saying no nicely, because it is still available on Amazon, still doing well, you can still pick it up. All right. And question number four. Okay, let's see what we have here. Tom's best friend gets a promotion at work. Tom is happy for his friend, but he can't stop picturing himself in the in the friend's new position. Tom is feeling. Is it is he jealous? Is he feeling jealous or is he envious? Is he envy? What is he feeling? Is he jealous of that position or is he envious of that position? Jealousy or envy? Jealousy or envy? What do you guys think? I'll say, what do you ladies think? I didn't know. I just said, so what do you, is it jealousy or envy for Tom? That's that's really kind of like on that, that thin line I was talking about. Let's see. Uh-huh. Okay. I see. Um, Ruby said, I think Tom is feeling envy. And Lane says, some, maybe some of both. You know, I, that one is hard. The actual answer it is envy. But I can see that, Elaine, why you would say that. That's a hard one, I think. Because I don't think, I don't know. This is what I think, though. I think, and I've said this before, what's for you is for you. That if it was supposed to be his position, I'll use an example. This really happened last summer. I was uh, in LA and another with another writer friend of mine, and she was. I was staying at her at her place, but I was working on a film set. She must have, and I'm not exaggerating. She applied for 100. Think about what I'm saying here. 100 job openings, and she's she has a background. She's a, a personal assistant to. I think it was like the mayor of her city. She had all this experience. Every You would think she'd be able to walk in and get a job. It was that she knew so much. Could not get a job. Could not. I think I'm trying to even think she got interviews. I don't think so. But I remember telling her she was so, so, you know, broken up behind this. And I actually said to her, I said, um, I know you think that one of those jobs was yours, but it wasn't. And she's like, but I'm qualified. I, she was, I mean, she was giving me the whole rundown. I said, it, it's not your job. And she goes, why do you, how do you know that? I said, I just know. She went back home. She was out here from uh, another part of the country. I don't want to get into all the particulars because I don't want to get into a name, but she was from another part of the country. She went back home and ended up getting another job and getting a, think about this, not only a better job, higher paying job than any of the other jobs she could have had. And when she talked to me about it, she said, you are not going to believe this. I said, what? She goes, this, this job I have now makes more money than all the other ones. I said, I knew it. I knew that that job wasn't for you. So what's for you is for you. That's, that's the, that's the lesson in that. Okay. So Ruby, we have an A and a B. We have Ruby has an A, still has an A, and unfortunately, Lane has a B, but that's okay. That's okay. Now we have, we, let me make sure I think. There we go. Make sure I put Ruby's. And then we have Elaine said, Good job, Ruby. <laughs> and Ruby says, it, it has happened to me so much throughout my life. I think all of us, if we really, really look around, and be honest, it has happened to all of us. What What's for you? It really is for you. But it's you know why it's hard, I think? Because we think we know better. Don't we think? I know I do. Don't we think we'd like, well, Lord, that was my job. Why did you give it to someone? <laughs> we do. We think we know better. And the truth is we don't. We really don't. So let me go on to the next question. Let me see. And we have, now this is five out of six. Now five, 
Anya's best friend has started to spend time with one of their mutual friends. Anya feels left out and starts to treat the other two. Uh oh, oh, what I miss? Oh, hold on. The other treat the two of them rudely. Anya is feeling what? What is she feeling, ladies? I'm say, ladies, what is she feeling? I know you know. I know. This is one. This is an easy, not easy one, but I don't want to say it's an easy one. But what is she feeling? I'm going to say it again. i read the question again. Um, let me take, whoops. Let me go. I I'm, went ahead of myself. Here we go. There we go. Okay. We got jealous and jealous and we have a winner. <laughs> you are both correct. You are both correct. Elaine's correct and Ruby's correct. Thank you, ladies. It is jealous. She's jealous. Oh. I wish I could say I've never felt that before, but I've felt that before. These are not good feelings. They are not good feelings. And you know, I this is what I, I said, as long as you can recognize them, I think you're okay. I think the problem is when you cannot recognize it, when you don't know that that's what you're really feeling, that becomes the problem. It's what I think it is. But you're right, ladies. That's exactly right. Here you go. Is it jealous? She's jealous of that relationship of those two. Okay. And then we have very good, very good. Okay. This is question number six. Here we go. A poet's rival receives a prestigious award, even though the poet knows it was deserved. He starts to think of reasons why his rival should not have received it and why it should have been awarded to him instead. The poet is feeling... What do you think they're feeling? Even though they know it was well-deserved. Now, that's really interesting. Think about it. Um, they know it was well-deserved. Sometimes it isn't. So have you ever seen the situation where you didn't feel the person deserved it and they still got it? And you're like, well, my thing was better than their thing or what, whatever. I've been through that too. And the truth is, it wasn't my time. It wasn't my time. That's all it is. Okay. The question. Let me go back. Okay. Oh, believe it or not, it says je that they're jealous. See how closely this is? I know, ladies, you have envy. It's saying that the correct answer is jealous. Let me be honest with you, though. I had envy. So I don't know if we just, we think alike or whatever. I had envy, too, on that question. So I don't know. Question number six. If all three of us have the same answer, a poet's rival receives a prestigious award, even though the poet knows it was deserved. He starts to think of reasons why his rival should not have received it and why it should have been awarded to him instead. The poet is feeling. I thought that's what it was. I thought it was envious. But according to the answers on here, da -da, my, my little answer sheet, it says jealous. So see how close it is? See how close we are? That, that should tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. So we have three against one. <laughs> against the, the answer sheet, we have three against that one. But I would I would venture to say that that is definitely, in my opinion, I think it's, it's uh, envious. That's what it said. That's what it sounds like to me. I would say envious. So even though the system is saying it's jealous, I think we would say it's envious without a doubt. But it's one, I, like I said, I would highly say this to anybody. As long as you recognize, you're fine. And don't forget, I'm saying this, so I, I want me and my commercials now. Don't forget to go to YouTube and uh, click the like button and subscribe. 
and share this the show. We're gonna also be on a cable station. We're gonna be, uh, you know, in the next couple of months, I have to do have an intro and outro and all those fun things, and then they're gonna start having the show on the cable station. So I'm excited about that. That's something new that's coming. And those of you also new stuff that's coming, um, a subscription to the email list that's coming. Um, okay, let's see, Lane, you said, yes, recognizing how you are feeling is important if you can. It, it's important if you can. Maybe telling the person or discussing it with them would help you. Thank you, Elaine. Let me be honest. I doubt that people do that, though. You know what we do? We would do anything but the right thing. <laughs> That's the truth. It's like we would do anything. I know. Congratulations to you two. Ladies, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The two of you. Thank you, Ruby. And thank you, Lane. You know, it's like, um, uh, oh, I almost, I think I, because it was an achievement. Oh, is that what it is? Uh, I think Ruby said, I guess because it was an achievement. I don't know. I can't tell you on that. I don't know. I, th But the, all three of us had the same answer. Let me say that. I will tell you that. I was, I'm, I was in agreement with, the, with you two ladies. So I think I think we're right. That's what <laughs> that's what I think. The fact that the three of us said the same exact answer is very. It's just not like we split. So that's very interesting to me that we did. Uh, but congratulations to the two of you for and thank you both for participating in this because I think this is interaction and um, this is what I'm finding. I don't know why it is sometimes, it, the, but I'm trying something new. As many of you probably could tell right now, uh, there haven't been any guests for the show. I am actually trying to, to do the show. Um, I've seen other shows like this where the, the person is, it's the, they have the show and they're talking to the audience. And so you get to give feedback. Uh, oh, this was fun. <laughs> Thank you, Ruby. <laughs> you know, I want, that's what I said. I wanted to do something different. And it's not just me, talk, 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 talk. And you don't, I want your feedback too. That's why I like the, the uh, questions and everything. You got to give me your, you know, how do you feel about these things that are said? And I'm, I'm putting to use some of the, the skills from teaching from who, you know, for 30 plus years in education. I, I look back now and, and it, it seems like it flew by. And also um, Ruby Elaine's a teacher too. She's a retired teacher. Oh, thank you, Elaine. Elaine's retired. She's been retired now. I think Elaine retired after I did. I retired in 2012, Elaine. I can't remember what year you retired. But I retired in 2012. I've been retired ever since. I look back. It's, and it, it's, it's, it has flown by. I cannot believe I've been retired 11 years now. I still can't believe that. Is it 11? No, 12. This is my 12th year. This is 12. Uh-huh. Oh, you said, I know. All of us teachers, think about that. All ed educators. Oh, 2019. Okay, Lane. Okay. Good for you. Good for you. And so I just, I have really, um, I just sent some information out. Elaine, I don't know if you saw the last email I sent out about taking classes. You can take classes at Cal State. I know you already have your, your master's and everything. But anybody, if you know someone that wants to get, let's say they want to get a master's, they can get a master's. And I think they pay like $15 a class. That's, so, that is so low. Oh, Ruby, you did not retire in 2009. Are you serious? You go, girl. Look, <laughs> Elaine, she beat us. That's for sure. <laughs> I tell you, and um, Elaine Ruby is is an I think she's an actress, and if you saw uh, Trophy Wife, uh, I know you're right. Thank you, Elaine. We never stop. Isn't that the truth? That's the truth. If you if you saw the movie Trophy Wife, Elaine uh, Ruby is the mom in the in the movie Trophy Wife. She's the mother, and. I can't remember. No, we didn't meet on the set, though, Ruby. When did we meet, Ruby? We met at the film festival, I think. I recognized you. I think that's what it was. At the, at, I was at the uh, Prince George Film Festival. Oh! <laughs> Ruby! <laughs> she said, 
the first day. <laughs> she said, Ruby said, absolutely. On the first day I was eligible to retire, I was out of there. <laughs> You said you you had told me I don't know how many years did you teach Ruby? Is it more than? Because mine was was um, oh that's what it was Prince George. Uh, we, we did we did. I recognized you though the soon and I said oh I know that and I said I know that lady. That's why I went over to to you and started talking to you. and I and and Ruby's been on the show before. Now Ruby, you need to talk to Elaine because we got to get Elaine on the show. Oh, 25 years. yeah, twenty five years. Once you have been, and I think for a while like that, for me personally, I knew it was time for a change. It's just time for something new. And I didn't even know when, when I left, I didn't even know I could write. I had no clue. I, that was not even in my, I, I didn't even, that was not even a thought in my mind that writing was not one of the things. I actually tried gardening and I tried painting. Okay. You said, go for it, Elaine. Uh, be on the show. <laughs> You see that, Elaine? Ruby said, go for it and be on the show. I know. Ruby, this lady has helped so many of our young people uh, get their college educations. She is a wealth of, when it comes to scholarships and helping the kids to get money to go to school, this is the lady. This is the lady. And Elaine, we'll be talking too because Bradley's daughter, Nasea, graduates next year. And she's a three point. I want to say 3.5 or 3.6 grade point average. And she's in, uh, but she's out of Florida. I don't know if that matters. And, and her goal is to be an actress. That is her goal. She wants to be, she's going to, she's going to be studying drama. So we're excited for her for that. But I just wanted to make sure I, um, that, you know, that well, I was, I'm giving you, I say, giving you a plug, put it, put in your new movie, uh, Ruby, that's on, um, BET Plus right now. Put in the night the title of your new movie because we're gonna probably be watching it. We we'll probably be watching it tonight to be honest with you. But what's the name of your new movie? Oh, Oliver says hi everyone. He, he says hi everyone for uh, hi everyone for joining the show and sharing your experiences and input and thank you for supporting the show. All right, that's that's our executive producer Oliver. So people people thought was they. Well, they knew you really existed, Oliver, but they saw you Christmas, so they know you exist. All right, Oliver. So, Elaine, we got to get you on the show now and talk to the parents. And all I need from you, Elaine, is your headshot. Uh, okay, for what it's worth on BET, here we go. Ladies, gentlemen, support this movie. Um, Ruby is in it. She's one of the characters in this movie, and you can watch it on BET Plus. The movie is called For What It's Worth on BET Plus. Go to BET Plus, and you can so and you want to see For What It's Worth, and you get a chance to see this beautiful lady. I am just so honored to know her and to meet her. Um, it was just it's a, been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. And Elaine says so. Don't forget, write that down. For What It's Worth on BET Plus. That's for those of you streaming on BET Plus. And Elaine says, I will look up the movie and look up Trophy Wife. And you'll see the mother on Trophy Wife. That's Ruby. Um, now, Mayor, you know, I had over 46 years, girl. Oh, you, Elaine. Now, you done put in some time. Health has hindered me a little, but I still do things with young people in life. You sure do. You have, I think about this thing, like not that long ago, we didn't even have Zoom. Think about that. Now we do. So you had a, a big, I mean, you had, we have changed so much that it didn't stop anything. And I was just showing these for those of you that haven't seen the children's books. Uh, this is the newest one. Bradley can't find his pants. The other one, Justin lost a tooth. This is stuck in the elevator. All of these are available on Amazon. So if you ever want to get a, a, a book, ages, these all three are for ages two to six. If you have a two to six year old, Bradley can't find his pants is named after our middle son, Bradley. Justin lost a tooth is the youngest son, Justin, and stuck in the elevator. It's Oliver and I were in Brazil and we were stuck in the elevator. And here, this is a, uh, for as anthology. I'm in this book with 13 other authors. 
you can get and these are all available on Amazon. And here is my journaling, a brand I created called My Journaly. So if you're interested in a journal, you can get all these on Amazon. I just wanted to make now executive producer of the show is Oliver Welch. And the other executive producer is myself, and I'm one of the writers. And this is our contact information. You can follow on Instagram, Mary or at Mary underscore D underscore Welch. Send me an email, Mary at MaryDWelch.com, either one. And that is the, I think that's it for our, there we go. That is the end of the, I said the end of our show. We're not the end in because I want to hear back from you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, Elaine, hold on. Oh, please like and subscribe. Thank you. I tell you, Ruby said, please like and subscribe, everyone. So she's encouraging like, subscribe, and share. Like, subscribe. That's, you know what that sounds like on The Wizard of Oz? Oh my, you go, go, going down the yellow brick road. But I'm going to say, like, subscribe, and share. Oh my, like, subscribe, and share. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. But like, subscribe, and share. I And it is so appreciated. And if you haven't already joined the email list, you want to join the email list. I sent out an email uh, a few hours ago about the Cal State classes. You want to do that. You really stay in the know on that. Um, that's what you want to do. Okay. So thank you again. And Ruby, thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Both of you. I can't thank you guys enough because the two of you on the, on the show was really, it was wonderful to have both of you answering those questions. It really made a difference. And you said, like, subscribe, and share, everybody. Thank you. And this is Elaine says, hi, Oliver. Thank you for all the help you give your beautiful wife. Oh, and my friend. Oh, Elaine. And how I mean, I don't know how many years, Elaine. It's been so many, we can't even count them. But I didn't know that you had 46 years in education. I didn't know that. But, and thank you again. I tried to go to the WAG meeting today and it was, I got there late. It was already over. I did try and go to that meeting though. I wanted to make sure. So ladies and gentlemen, we will be back in a week. If, as they say, if God say the same, it'll be a week from today. We'll be back again on another Monday. We're always live on Mondays. I am going to start probably making some other videos. A lot of different things are coming down, as they say, coming down the pipe. Um, you'll also be able to, if you're on the email list, you could, there's going to be a subscription on the email list. I'm still working with the person that's doing the list as to all the benefits you get, depending on which one you sign up for. I'm really getting excited about that. So if you're on the list, you'll be able to subscribe. If God says the same, thank you. Have a great, thank you, Ruby. You have a great week too, everybody. God bless you. I love you. I'll see everybody in a week. Bye, everybody.